Hi everyone, my name is Yu Dai Tsai. Today I'm going to talk about resonance self in nerking dark meshangs and small scale structure. So the theme of this talk is that I will connect dark matter to standard model QCD meshang sectors and consider observation theory and experiments and find out the most promising testable dark matter. So this is our understanding of dark matter right now. We know next to nothing about it, but there are overwhelming observational, including astrophysical and cosmological evidences. And uh, as Vera Rubin told us, uh, if you analyze the velocity distribution of these rotating objects around the galaxy, you can reinfer that there are dark matter that is not visible. But let's look, look deeper into that. There is something called small scale structure study. They are basically studying dwarf spiral galaxies, these smaller galaxies, to even some larger object like galaxy cluster, a single one. This is as opposed to large scale structure, which is even larger scale, including a lot of galaxies. Okay, so in this small scale structure study, there is something called core curses prop curse problem. So the idea is very simple. If you consider these dark matter models, and in some galaxy, you find out that uh, in a lot of the smaller, cleaner galaxy, you find out when you um, model your dark matter through some cold dark matter simulation, you find out the profile does not fit the does not is not the same as the indication from the data. So especially in the smaller radius region. So there's a cuspy profile from the simulation that is very different from the core profile. Now there's two solutions. There are two major solutions. There may be more, but I'm gonna, gonna talk about the two major solution. One is saying that dark matter might have some interesting special property to cause that. The other is to say there's something called baryonic feedback, that supernova and things blow away things in the, inside the center of the galaxy to cause the core. And, but my view about this is this is not necessarily a problem because standard model like the supernova, baryonic feedback could potentially solve a lot of this issue already, but still, this is a great opportunity for us to understand the dark matter, like its property, and also to constrain it, to constrain the interaction and things like that. And there's a lot of opportunity here to look into small scale structure. In a bigger scale, there's all these different kind of dark matter model ranging from a, a wide range. So you might think it's a little bit getting lost in this wide range of dark matter, but we can focus on the MEV to GEV because even though we don't know what dark matter mass is, this regime is the thermal dark matter regime, meaning that you can have thermal model, which, uh, and also you can explain a lot of the anomaly. And also you can use a dark matter to kind of address this small scale structure problem or find a constraint on that. So this is a very interesting regime to look into. Okay. Self-interacting dark meson. Self-interacting dark meson is, uh, sorry, dark, self-interacting dark matter. Self-interacting dark matter is the program to study if you can use self-interacting dark matter to explain a lot of issues, uh, including these uh, small scale structure uh, observations. And it was proposed a long time ago by Spurgo and Steinhardt. But recently, there are studies using semi-analytical results to find out that maybe dark matter actually prefer a velocity-dependent cross-section, as pointed out here. So by this paper, they find cluster prefer a smaller cross-section, 0.1, dwarf and, uh, and uh, low surface brightness galaxies prefer a larger cross-section. So there is this interesting velocity dependence and this can be accounted by considering a dark matter model that have a light mediator. So you can have this interesting uh, velocity dependence. And if you look at the cross section itself, it is very similar to the dark matter 
uh, sorry, the meson or the nucleon scattering cross section or the hadron scattering cross section. So one interesting idea would be to model this based on the QCV hadronic sectors. And this brings us to this resonance self interacting dark meson, which is a different class of model comparing to this kind of a toy model or some dark photon model. This is what we have for the, we want to consider for the uh, Masonic kind of dark matter model. So before that, let's look at some toy model. A toy model would be you have a dark matter going through some mass resonance states. And by mass resonance, I mean the dark matter mass is about two times, oh, sorry, the, red, the mediator mass is about the two times of the dark matter mass, but a little bit more. It could also be a little bit more, a little bit less, but let's consider the situation that there's a little bit more. So quantified by this delta. Delta is how much more of the resonance mass is comparing to two times of the dark matter mass. And then you could have something called Bragg-Wigner resonance given this setup. So the dark matter can go through a heavy resonance going back to dark matter. And this Bragg-Wigner resonance would be, would be satisfied when there's a condition that the kinetic energy of the dark matter is about two times of this delta times the mass of the dark matter. Meaning that when you have this energy, you can go on this resonance, going like a, this peak. Okay, good. So furthermore, you can then think about what's happening in the standard model could be similar to what's happening in the dark matter sector. So in standard model, we know that B0 and B0 bar can have this kind of resonant to Upsilon 4S. Of course, Upsilon 4S can decay to a lot of different stuff, but it can actually dominantly decay to B0 and B0 bar. And this is very interesting. And we will model our dark sector through, uh, based on this kind of physics. So if you actually look into it, you find out there's a lot of resonance. K plus K minus can go, so, go to phi S S bar. So there's many of them and let's classify it. So for the Masonic sector, there's many, many resonance and we can kind of understand it. And uh, so here is, this plot is completely standard model. These black dots are pseudo scalar meson. So two times of the pseudo scalar mass can match the vector mass of mass in this and this and this location. And as you find out, if you make your quark heavier, so this is one of the heavier quarks. So you have a heavy and light quark. If you make your heavy quark even heavier, it's easier to hit the resonance. So this is a very interesting fact. And sorry, I, let me say again, these are the Masonic spectrum and you can kind of understand this spectrum. All these dots are actual standard model data. So these are not dark matter. These are all standard model. So now we can model our dark sector based on this Masonic physics. And the idea is we, I have something like a dark matter going through resonance, which is basically the same as heavy meson going through Upsilon 4S. And the ingredient, what we need is a heavy quark and a light quark. So B heavy quark with the light Q quark can form a heavy meson and heavy meson can go through this resonance. And we also need confinement so we can have a dark QCD that is similar to lambda QCD. And if we do that, we can go and find in the literature how to analytically estimate the spectrum. And we found this uh, Creek and Rosner has this paper a long time ago to model it analytically. And we use exactly that. And again, as I show you, I find out that it's easier to hit the resonance when my heavy quark mass is heavier. So this plot is the level of these resonances. And this curve is two times of the mass of the dark mass up. So the dark meson can hit the resonance easier when your MQ is large. And the close to resonance is about N times 10 to the minus three. N is what level you go to. So if you go to level 10, you, it's very easy to hit the resonance because there's 10 to the minus three chance. 
So, so not 10 to the minus three. So based on how, if you move along this axis, the change in this MQ is comparing to how close you are to this mass, uh, this gap is 10 to the minus three. So it's very dense. There's a lot of dense states. So you're, it's e very easy for you to hit the resonance. So the smaller this number is, the easier it's e e e the easier it is to hit the resonance. So we model our uh, dark matter based on that, but we actually need a symmetry. And the reason why we need a symmetry is because we want the heavy meson to be the dark matter. We don't want the light meson to be dark matter. And heavy meson, if it's not a symmetry, if it's symmetric, they will annihilate away. So a symmetry is basically saying there's more uh, meson than anti-meson. There's more quark than anti-quark. So with that, we actually come up with this uh, quark theory that we have a C quark and B quark, they are heavy quarks. And they are the same mass as the MQ prime. There's a light quark that is U, so it's, and it's a light, lighter mass. So now you can form two different dark matter particles. One is B prime and one is B prime. They play the role of the B0, B0 bar in standard model. They can annihilate and go to something called the, that is the upshon. But upshon is made of BC bar. So now upshon is made of BC bar. And then now you can go through this resonance. Right, so this is the heavy meson story. And this asymmetric dark matter is super easy and interesting because you can basically predict its mass directly. Because asymmetric dark matter, they usually directly come from the same origin as the standard model asymmetry. Like we have more matter than antimatter. So we should also have dark, more dark matter than anti dark matter, and they don't annihilate it away. And these point us to the dark matter being about 5 GeV. Because standard model particle is the proton mass, proton mass is 1 GeV. We roughly have five times more. Uh, dark matter than standard model particle in terms of mass, uh, total mass. So as a result, the simple mass would tell us you, we roughly need the dark matter to be five times heavier than standard model particle. So this asymmetry dark matter is quite predictive, even with the simplest form to be 5 GeV. So we'll go with this 5 GeV. And now we have the dark matter to be 5 GeV. Lambda QCD have to be pushed down because as I told you, I want my quark to be much heavier, about 20 times heavier than Lambda QCD. So it, since I fixed my quark mass to be about 5 GeV, I need to push down my Lambda QCD to uh, 20 times. So my Lambda QCD is about MeV, like 100 MeV level. So it's very similar to our the actual standard model Lambda QCD. So again, the dark, dark lambda QCD because of this setup has to be around 100 MeV level. And we also find out fixing to the astrophysical observation, the G has to be about 27, which is very close to 25, which is the standard model value. So it's a non-trivial fact that is very interesting. And you can ask what happens to the dark pion. So the dark pion, we allow it to decay to dark photon, and the dark photon can then decay to E plus E minus. Now then we almost have a complete theory because we have the dark matter to be 5 GeV. It pushed down the lambda QCD to be 100 MeV. And these 100 MeV then push down the dark photon mass to be lower than 100 MeV, actually lower than roughly half of 100 MeV. So now you can search for this dark photon that decays to standard model electron pair or muon pair. So this dark photon, since I, I won't introduce too much, dark photon is just something analogous to standard model photon, but can have a mass through symmetry breaking and can decay to lepton pair. So this is very interesting. And it's kind of necessity for low mass dark matter, this kind of portal. Either you have dark photon or you have other kind of portal, they can mediate things between uh, dark matter and Sinamado motivated by this Lee Weinberg theory. And I won't get into too much detail. Okay. So now you can search for this dark photon 
in facilities. One facility actually I propose is called long quest experiment. So long quest experiment is based on the idea of the dark quest experiment. So dark quest experiment says that we can repurpose this experiment called uh, sequest or spin quest, this experiment at Fermilab, repurpose it, put the EMCAL into the experiment to search for long lead particle, including the star photon. And my idea is that let's not do it here. Let's do it in the back room because the signature is cleaner and you don't interfere the nuclear physics that is proposed for this old experiment, the, the original experiment, not old experiment, it's an existing currently running experiment. So now you have this long quest experiment, you can search for dark photon in a very clean environment. And that dark photon is what we have in our theory. So our theory not only has astrophysical prediction and the small scale structure prediction, it also has these accelerator search. So as you can see, I plot my long quest uh, curve here. And the, these are the parameter. So the lower I can push my dark photon mass, so these are around 100 MeV, the better I can have the, um, the lower I can have my lambda QCD, the better I can hit the resonance. So there is this interesting interplay for the phenomenology. Now there's also ongoing astrophysical study. So we're studying if we can di dis differentiate the dark matter, different dark matter theory. And by studying small scale, smaller scale dark matter that is uh, even, even smaller, like um, around this regime, like uh, adding more data to this dwarf and uh, low surface brightness uh, uh, galaxies. And actually a recent paper actually showed that maybe resonance self inherting dark matter is, or resonance dark meson is better than the kind of light mediator kind of uh, dark matter story. So recap, why is this very interesting? Just because it's a general scenario to naturally give the resonance structure in dark, either in dark matter or in standard model sector, has interesting structures similar to standard model QCD, can easily connect the dark lattice QCD theory. For example, this paper actually calculate the mass on states and we can use that. And has signatures that can be searched in experiment, accelerator experiments, and it's also testable in astrophysical study. So this is very interesting. And my astro, my research program is not limited to this. It also has uh, de developing other models, searching for new physics in these new experiments. And there's many experiments that I propose, you can look them up. And also I develop, develop new cosmological and astrophysical searches, looking for dark matter in neutron star, gravitational events, these and that. So these are my kind of my program. And in this kind of time, we really is kind of like a particle physics renaissance. We look for things everywhere and we collaborate with not only a theoretical expert, but also experimental and observational experts. So I learn from all the people and I combine these ideas to look for the most promising dark matter models and the most promising candidates to explain a lot of this anomaly and give us signatures. Uh, yeah, that's fine dark matter. Thank you very much. Let me close this. Thank you.